Namaste. You're with Andrew and Vanessa at Yogi Moksha. And today we've got a short 30 something minute practice focusing on the lower back. And Vanessa has very kindly offered to put her much younger spine on the rack to um, demonstrate these postures. So it's only a short sequence, so we'll get straight on to just some natural breathing to just bring our focus and attention into the room. So finding yourself in a comfortable position, either sitting on a block or just sitting cross-legged or even just on your knees on the mat, straightening the spine. And if you're comfortable, bringing the eyes to a close or just averting your gaze towards the, the mat or the floor. With the eyes closed now, just settling in, settling into your posture, feeling yourself supported by the mat, becoming aware of your breath, breathing in and breathing out. in and out. Just making the breath, at least for another minute or so, just the main focus. There are other sounds going around us. It's fine, just let them be. Just draw your attention, your focus, your concentration, back to the movement of the air, in over the nostrils, throat deep into the lungs, and then as we exhale all the way back up and again out through the nostrils. Just a natural breathing rhythm. It'll naturally slow and as it slows, we'll trigger the parasympathetic nervous system. We'll get into a nice cycle of relaxation. Just one more breath now. And you're either just gently blinking your eyes open or raising the head if you're looking at the floor. So our first posture is going to target our area, the, the lower back. And to do that, Vanessa is going to lie on her front. So if you move to lying on your front on the mat, and then just raising the torso up, supporting yourself on the, the elbows. The position of the elbows and the hands is entirely up to you, but in general terms, the closer that you have the arms, the forearms together, the higher the torso is going to be, and the more stress you're going to feel in the base of the spine, in our target area, right down there in the base of the spine, the sacrum, the lumbar. So, Find what's comfortable for you at the moment. Take your attention to the target area, the lower back. Just relaxing. As you relax, you find the posture opens up a little bit. You might want to just move those arms in a little bit more, get a little bit more height if you want. It's also possible that you could use a bolster. If you wanted to a little bit more height, you could place a bolster underneath the, um, the forearms there. And that'll just give you a little bit more lift. And 
think for some people, not for Vanessa, but for some people, if you want to straighten the arms out and come into what's known as a seal sometimes, that'll give you even more elevation of the torso and even more compression down there in the base of the spine. So just come into a posture that suits you, you're comfortable with. The other variable in this posture is the position of the feet. So the feet closer together, you generally find that that will concentrate the sensation at the middle of the spine. And the further apart the feet are, the more it spreads that sensation through the back. So you're getting a nice compression here in the lumbar sacrum, nice extension of the spine, so you're compressing all the way up the back, all those spinous processes that poke out from the back, just getting a nice little bit of compression there, opening up the front of the body, so you may even be getting some connective tissue stress down in the front of the body there, the rectus abdominis, stomach, in the spine, we're opening up, compressing the back. Some healthy stress there on the discs that are in between the individual segments of the spine. All of which helps to refresh and renew the spinal fluid. So just finding some stillness here. If you want to explore a little, you can always try some different head positions allowing the head to fall forward. And again, with all these little tweaks and variations, do them mindfully. And mindfully in terms of recognising what the effect of each is on the target area. That's the important thing. So just maintaining that stillness now. Maybe taking the focus to the target area in the lower back. Staying on your front, we're going to take the left leg and just bend the knee and bring that knee forward. Again, it doesn't have to be 90 degrees. The position of the knee backwards and forwards and the position of the ankle in and out is entirely up to you. Remembering that our target area here is the lower back. But we're also going to be getting some um, connective tissue stress in the front of the body, the rectus abdominis, and that'll be on the opposite side of the leg that's forward. So if we've got the left leg forward, that'll be in the right rectus abdominis. There's a brief cameo appearance from the dog. So just settling in, just finding your expression with the position of the knee and the ankle, position of the arms. Relaxing the muscles in the front of the body. As you relax, perhaps the posture opens up a little bit, maybe you feel the need to adjust. If you want a little bit more, then your one option is to take a bolster and place that under the forearm, so that will just elevate the torso and give you more stress in the front and more compression in the base of the spine. And again, the third option is to bring the hands, straighten the arms, and come into what's almost a seal with the bent leg. So again, take your choice of the expression, either on the mat, bolster, or up on the arms. 
I'm just finding stillness now. Stillness, just exploring the connective tissue stress in the front of the body. So that I'll be focused here on the right hand side. So Vanessa's got a left leg bent. So that'll be concentrated on the right side of the rectus abdominis, the stomach at the front. But what we're really after in this practice is the compression that you'll be feeling in the base of the spine. Just ensuring that she's maintaining a nice deep level of stress there, but that it's sustainable. Just breathing into the posture. A little bit of discomfort's okay. Sometimes we can feel particularly when we're starting yoga or starting yin, it can feel uncomfortable to compress in the base of the spine. But as long as we're not getting sharp pain, a little bit of discomfort is okay. And if we are getting discomfort, just breathing into it. Inhaling, and as we exhale, just allowing that discomfort to settle. Just knowing that it's healthy, compression. And then gently just straightening that bent leg. We're going to come to the other side. So we're not going to take a rebound in between. So we're going to go straight to the other side. We're going to bend that right leg, bring that knee up to the side. We're already on our elbows, so we've got a little bit of elevation in the torso. Good place to start. And then we start to find that edge. So again, with the right leg forward and bent, we're going to feel it more in the left hand, rectus abdominis on the front. And maybe just off one side slightly in the compression at the base of the spine. As we relax the muscles on the front of the body, the stress there will be moved to the connective tissues. And that may allow us to feel the postures opening up a little bit, gives us the opportunity to adjust. So again, if we want to Use the bolster or come up onto our hands for seal. Remembering that each side is different. So it's entirely possible that on one side of the body, you're only going to be comfortable coming up onto the forearms. On the other hand, on the other side, you may need to get up onto the bolster to um, get the healthy stress that you're, you're after. So part of the in practice is recognising those differences between the different sides of the body and adjusting accordingly, as opposed to more alignment based yoga, where you're directed into a particular posture based on what it looks like. In yin, we're really just focused on, in this case, what Vanessa's feeling there, not only in the rectus abdominis at the front, but also how much compression she's getting in the base of the spine. And she probably wants to aim for no more than 70% of her maximum range of motion in any particular posture, even when she's been in it a while. We certainly don't want to be pushing towards the 100% a level of 70% really gives the body the opportunity to open up those connective tissues, which allows, particularly at the joint sites, allows some healthy stress in those tissues and also the bones, which is very good for letting the body know that we want these areas 
renewed and repaired. Otherwise, if we don't use these areas or stress them in a healthy way, the body assumes that we're, we don't need them and it will redirect the internal resources, whether that's bone rebuilding or repairs to tendons and ligaments, it will redirect those resources to where it thinks we do need them. So that's really why we're adopting this healthy stress approach in yin. So now just maintaining the stillness, keeping the focus on the target area, the front of the body and the base of the spine. Again, just enjoying that compression in the base of the spine there, extension of the spine. Breathing into it, maybe one more time. And now just slowly removing any props and taking the straighten both legs. We're going to come up to a seated position, we'll just come up onto our knees. And here we're just going to sit back onto our heels, or we can sit between the heels, that's your choice. And we're going to open the knees as far apart as we're comfortable, sometimes called a child's pose. And then we're just going to bring the, the body forward, folding forward. And again, there's obviously a range of options here. If Vanessa wanted to, she could use a bolster to support herself. If she wanted to take some of the weight off the arms, she could put it under her torso. She settles into the posture. Just finding some finding the edge there. and the muscles in the, all the way down the back of the body. Maybe even coming down into the, towards the glutes there. As she relaxes those muscles, maybe the posture is going to open up a little bit for her, which might let her adjust a little bit. Maybe she adjusts the position of the knees. healthy stress there, the deep flexion, a bit of a flexion of the spine, so opening the spine up, all the way up the spine, the lumbar, thoracic, a little bit there in the cervical, up in the neck there. As Vanessa is demonstrating, you can have the arms out in front, or if you want to, you can take them down the side, behind the body. And just settling in and finding some stillness now. Stillness and exploring that connective tissue stretch in the back. Maybe coming down to the glutes. You might also be feeling a little bit of something in the, the groin on the inside of the leg. But again, that's secondary here. What we're really after is working the back. And of course, we've got the healthy stress in the bones, so particularly in the spine, Again, with the flexion in the spine, opening up the back, creating some space 
between the individual segments, between the spinous processes on the, the back. Compressing the front of the spine. All of which is good. It's putting a little bit of stress on the intervertebral discs. Which will help renew the spinal fluid. maintain a healthy, flexible spine. So just a few more breaths here. Gently unfolding now and coming to a seated position, staying on your on your knees or a kneeling position. You might just need to shuffle forward a bit on the mat. So again, although our main target area in this sequence is the lower back, in this posture we're also going to find that there's a good connective tissue stress in the quads on the front of the legs. So what Vanessa is going to do now, she's just going to take her body back, she's going to lean back, again choosing to sit either on the heels or between the heels, whatever suits for you. As she leans back, just going to find that first edge, so the, the first point of physical resistance. As she settles in, she's not going to go to the full expression of the posture. You know, she's going to settle in. She might choose to have a bolster under her back as she's showing now. Again, just to support her. And that may stay there for the whole of this posture. Or as things open up, she may choose to remove it. One of the great things about yin is that we've got the time to make these decisions. We don't need to rush into a posture. Yeah, we've got four, five, sometimes longer minutes. And we can really take our time to ease in, understanding where the target areas are, and just work with how our body responds. So as we ease into this posture, we're gonna feel some stress in the quads, both legs. And as the posture opens up, we can see Vanessa's removed the bolster, her prop. She's also going to be feeling some compression in the base of the spine, the sacrum and the lumbar down the base of the spine. Some discomfort here is not unusual, but again, just be mindful if there is any pinching. We probably need to back off a little, come out of the posture, maybe get that bolster back in if we're feeling any pinching. If we're comfortable and we want a little bit more, we can do what Vanessa's done here and just take our arms above the head. And that's going to increase not only the connective tissue stress in the, the quads, but maybe going to move that or extend that stress from the quads up in towards the hip flexor, even in towards the front of the body, the rectus abdominis. But it's also going to increase the amount of stress she's going to feel in the lumbar and sacrum. The arms can be folded as she's demonstrating. They can even be just extended straight above the head or out to the sides. So just explore some of these options. Again, if we play with the position of the head, we might find that turning the head from side to side, mindfully, maybe that affects what we're feeling in the, the quad. 
tripods, maybe to a lesser degree in the back, but maybe so. So again, bringing the attention and focus towards the target areas. So we've got the quads, but we've also got the lower back. Bring our attention to the lower back. Just become aware that we've also got a nice extension of the spine, all the way up the spine. So the opposite of our last posture, we've now got compression going all the way up the back of the spine. So by moving from tension to compression, front and back, we're really going to work the lower back work those discs, the intervertebral discs. So just enjoying that now. Maybe one or two more breaths here. And just gently now coming out of the posture. If we're in the full expression here, it's easier just to take one leg out to the side, roll a little. And staying lying on the back, the next posture is going to be a lying twist. So just take a couple of breaths to um, recover from the, the last posture before we jump into the next. Just a brief awareness of how that last posture has made us feel. Before we bend both knees up, and the feet on the mat. And we're just going to take the left leg on top of the right, so crossing the legs. And you can choose here to just have the left leg like this, or if you want to, you could tuck the left leg again behind the, the right calf, entirely up to you. But maybe for the moment, just start with the, the one twist. Here, we're going to just allow that left knee to come down towards the right hand side of the mat. Our arms can be out to the side, above the head. Again, just explore and explore, always explore these levers, the arms and the torso. Explore the position of these levers in relation to what they do to our target area. And our primary target area here, this whole practice is the spine. So we are gonna get some connective tissue stress here. Maybe through the, the glutes and the outside edge of the, the top legs of the left leg. But we're primarily concerned with the back and the lower back. Now in these lying twists, we can have you know, one of three positions of the knees. We can have the knees tucked up here, as Vanessa is demonstrating. And this is the one that we're going to work with in this sequence. For other sequences, you can have the, the knees in a more neutral position so they're sort of 90 degrees, or in fact the legs straighter. But these really take the stress away from the area that we want to work it today. So we're gonna keep the knees as close into the chest as we're comfortable. If we find that the left knee doesn't quite make it to the mat, that's fine. But if that's introducing too much stress for you in the lower back, then we can support that knee with a block or on the bolster. And equally, if we're finding that we're not perhaps getting enough stress, we want a little bit more in the back, we could place the right hand on that knee. Again, not pulling the knee down to the mat, but just using the weight of the hand and gravity just add a little bit more to 
interest in them. So just finding some stillness now in that posture. Stillness, just exploring connective tissue stresses, which might be in the top glute and the top side of the side of the top leg, particularly in terms of the spinal twist. Healthy stress in the bones. Great for ensuring that the, the bones are renewed and strong. We certainly don't want weak bones as we as we age. And here we've got this lovely twist going all the way from the lumbar at the base through the thoracic up into the cervical spine. Just one more breath this side. Getting ready for the other side, we just untuck the legs, maybe straighten the legs out into a lying on the back. Yeah, just a couple of breaths here before we move to the other side. So, bending at the knees, feet to the mat, taking the right leg over the left. Choosing your twist, whether we go one twist or two. And whichever variation you select doesn't have to be the same as the other side. Just allowing that right knee to come towards the left-hand side of the mat, left-hand side of the body. Remembering that we, we want to, in this sequence, keep the knees tucked more in towards the, the chest. If that's uncomfortable for you, you could try a different position for the knees. Arm position again, out to the sides, above the head. You explore with that and see what the effect is on the target area, on the spinal twist. Finding the edge, relaxing. As we relax, particularly relaxing the muscles around the back and in the glute, in the, in the side of the top leg, we might find that the posture opens up a little bit. As it opens up, we might want to adjust. Again, we might bring that hand onto the right knee, just a little bit of weight with gravity, just to give us a bit of extra twist. We might alter the position of the right arm. We might even explore the position of the head. By turning the head from one side to the other, we're gonna get more or less cervical spine twist. And again, although we're focusing here on the lower back, yeah, the twist in the spine, the whole of the spine, is certainly going to have an impact down in the base of the spine. So finding stillness. Maybe taking the focus down to the lower back. Everything between the lumbar and the thoracic. Take our attention, maybe take our breath. We take our focus, we take our energy. So maybe taking the energy to that lower part of the back. The 
thoracic is the part of the back that's most responsive to twisting. But we'll still find some benefits to the lower back. Just breathing into the lower back and enjoying the physical release. Maybe even the emotional release. And just gently releasing, staying lying on the back for a rebound. Straightening the legs out, legs and arms relaxed. Using the rebound to just consolidate the stresses that we've put to the body over the last 30 something minutes. As we lie here, just maybe opening the mind to the sensations. Given the focus of our shortish sequence today, we might want to bring our focus and attention towards the, the lower back, so down towards the sacrum maybe coming up the spine towards the, the middle, the thoracic. The thoracolumbar muscles there in the middle of the spine. Maybe even bringing the focus, just wrapping around the sides, the obliques towards the rectus abdominis or the stomach at the front. The whole sort of middle torso area. Just bring our focus and attention there. open the mind to the sensations that are either arising or passing through. Not trying to change them, just becoming aware of them. Maybe getting some sense of how different that part of the back and the body feels now to how it felt when we started the practice. Just enjoying the relief that that brings. There's not much we can do in life if the lower back is not working with us. Just a couple more breaths now. Very gently now, maybe a couple of deeper inhales and exhales, maybe a wriggle of the fingers and the toes. And when you feel that you're ready, just roll in towards one side, pushing yourself up into a seated position. Straightening the back and just getting ready to face the rest of the day. Hope you enjoyed the practice on the lower back. Namaste. Namaste.